The Lord is truly risen. Alleluia. To him be glory and power for all the ages of eternity. Alleluia, alleluia. These words which we find in the entrance antiphon of today's liturgy reflect the sense of great rejoicing among Christians on this day of Easter when we celebrate the cornerstone of our faith, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Indeed, as you sing in the responsorial psalm, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. A remarkable feature of today's liturgy is that all the three readings, the first, second, and the gospel, come from the New Testament. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verses 37 to 43, which is part of the speech that Peter delivered in the house of Cornelius, identified as a centurion of the Italian cohort, that is, an officer of the Roman army. This speech is a synthesis of the main storylines of the Gospel message. It touches on the themes of the preaching of John the Baptist, the baptism of Jesus, Jesus' public ministry, with its characteristic battle against evil, the crucifixion, the resurrection, Christ's post-resurrection appearances, and the mission to the world. The speech resembles, in many respects, Peter's speech on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. In fact, the Holy Spirit also came down as Peter was still delivering this speech in the house of Cornelius, and baptism was immediately administered on those who were listening. It was in some sense, therefore, the Pentecost of the Gentiles. We are told that God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and power, and so he went about doing good and healing those oppressed by evil. However, men killed him by hanging him on a tree. At this point, it would seem that Jesus' project of defeating evil and advancing the reign of goodness in the world had been aborted. During the 40 days period of Lent, and especially on Good Friday, we contemplated and participated in that deep sense of sorrow and disappointment that engulfed the disciples of Jesus in the days of the tragic passion and death of the Lord and the cross. With the resurrection at Easter, however, our fears and sorrows give way to great rejoicing. In some sense, Jesus bounces back. There is a divine rebound, so to speak. As we read in verse 40, God raised him on the third day and made him manifest. As we rejoice at his resurrection, the risen Christ is entrusting to us the mission to preach him as judge and source of sanctifying grace. In verse 42, we read, He commanded us to preach and to testify that he is the one ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. I wish to lend my voices to those of my brothers to say Happy Easter. In our second reading, St. Paul invites the Colossians to seek and set their minds on things that are above because they have been raised with Christ. There are four injunctions I like to highlight in our readings from the four verses. Ta ano the third, seek the things above. The sign that one shares the vision of the resurrection is to focus on the things that are above, the things of heaven, not the things of this earth. You can read Philippians chapter 2 verse 14 and Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20. The earthly man focuses on worldly riches, greed, amassing wealth, and bodily pleasures and satisfaction. This first point leads to the second. The person who focuses on heavenly things sets his mind on holy things. Ta anofroneate literally means think the things above. The person thinks about heaven and what is in heaven, as we read in Colossians chapter 2 verse 20. And Jesus says to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not thinking, setting your mind on the things of God, 
but on the things of man. Matthew 16, 23. See also 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Seeking the things of heaven and thinking about them is based on the fundamental realization that our lives are hidden with Christ in God. Because we are not citizens of this world, and this world is not our final destination. This world is not our home. We are dead to the things of the world. That is, the things of this world will not control us or distract us from God. When we are dead to the things of this world, heaven is assured. Then we shall also appear with Him in glory at the end of our lives. The resurrection challenges us to focus on the things of heaven. The Gospel reading today is from John chapter 20, verse 1 to 9, which describes the events of Easter Sunday morning and specifically the discovery of the empty tomb. It is from the second part of John's Gospel, that is from John chapter 13 to chapter 21, often called the Book of Glory. Jesus reveals the glory of his death and resurrection, the climax of John's Gospel to his disciples. In the passage, we observe the first witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus and the confusion they experienced. Mary Magdalene was the first to visit the tomb. She noticed that the stone had been moved away. She became worried and she ran to Peter and the other disciple and reported that they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. These disciples ran immediately to witness the empty tomb themselves. When she said, we do not know, this hints that there could be other women as recorded in Mark chapter 16 verse 1, in Matthew 28 1, and in Luke chapter 24 10. Women were therefore the very first witnesses to the resurrection of Christ, followed by the apostles Peter and the beloved disciple. Mary was worried that Jesus' body may have been stolen. It wasn't uncommon at the time for tombs to be raided and robbed. Even the chief priests and the elders paid the soldiers to lie that Jesus' disciples stole his body at night. A story circulated among the Jews in Matthew chapter 28 from verses 12 to 15. John's Gospel therefore explained that when Peter and the other disciple entered the tomb, they saw the linen wrappings of Jesus lying in one place and the face covering rolled up apart from the other. If a thief had done it, why will they strip the body of the costly clothes and leave them properly arranged? The empty tomb therefore becomes the proof of Jesus' resurrection and not the act of a thief as the Jewish elders taught it. Therefore, when Peter and the beloved disciple went in, the other disciples saw and he believed. Although Peter didn't understand the rising from the dead yet, the other disciples saw not only the clothes, but their significance, so he believed. This fulfills the purpose of Jesus' coming to earth. In the beginning in John chapter 1 verse 7, the purpose is so that through him all men might believe. And at the end, in John chapter 20, from verses 30 to 31, he said, These were written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. After this, Mary Magdalene sees the Lord, followed by the disciples in the upper room, Thomas and the others as well. This seeing and believing in the empty tomb, akin to the seeing and the believing in the signs of Jesus in John chapter 4 verse 48 and in John chapter 10 from verses 25 to 26 was a sign itself from the Lord. Truly, the Lord is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. And we are his witnesses to the ends of the earth. Alleluia, alleluia. Once again, from the Devar Adonai family, we wish you all a very happy and blessed Easter season. Happy resurrection of the Lord to you and your family. The Devar Adonai team thanks you for listening. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
To follow our reflections for Sundays and solemnities, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow our Facebook page, Devar Adonai, or visit our website, devaradonai.org.